Hello everyone and welcome to Career Talks, where I talk to professionals in the tech, finance and consulting industries to better understand their jobs and responsibilities. In this video, I talk to Nicola. Nicola is an investment banker with five years of experience. He currently works at Evercore in the energy industry. In this video, we go through the detailed steps of an M&A transaction. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out the full episode. Thank you for watching. Uh, let's say I'm a client. I come yep. to your bank. I want to sell part of my company. Mm -hmm. What does the process look like from your end as an associate? What What do you do? Like, how does yep. that translate to your work? So basically, I mean, I will explain the overall process, mm -hmm. and then uh, whenever we come to a certain stage, I will uh, explain the role of Perfect. associate. Yeah, then maybe even analyst, because that's that's also uh, uh, relevant, helpful. Yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Relevant, yeah. So basically, when uh, let's say there's day zero, there is no no activity between mm -hmm. you and client. You are just starting to engage, and basically, they will come to you. Uh, sometimes uh, you will know that in the market that uh, one company wants to sell their whole business or part of the business and then you with other banks you pitch for it and the bank that gives like the best proposal they will win mm -hmm. but most of the time it's basically relationship based so mm -hmm. so if your uh, seniors have a relationship with, uh, with this company they will come to you and ask uh, us to, for, to do uh, the deal yeah 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 so basically when uh, they engage you it's, it's formally called when you're engaged so mm -hmm. there is engagement letter that is signed mm -hmm. like all the fees are agreed and everything you start the work. Mm -hmm. So how it starts from the beginning. So the first thing that you need to do is is a thing called teaser. Uh -huh. So it's a very short deck, 10 to 20 pages maximum, mm -hmm. which kind of gives very high level info about the company. Usually will not, or sometimes it will mention the name of the company. So it's kind of on a no name basis. So people uh, don't okay. need to sign the, the NDA to mm -hmm. get this info. Uh, so it's going to be probably all the historical financials, pub almost public. public stuff yeah, that you can find uh, anywhere. And basically, you will uh, you'll test the market with this. It, it is called soft sounding of the market. Mm -hmm. That's the phrase that you do. So what you do as an investment bank, you okay, you want to sell a certain company. You know in which industry they are, like, like which sub industry, sub group. Mm -hmm. So you you know exactly what they do, and you also know the whole industry and the whole universe of mm -hmm. buyers. So you based on what the company does, you will create like a buyer universe that mm -hmm. can potentially mm -hmm. buy this company. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be whatever 50, 60, it's hundred names, mm -hmm. whatever. and then then you're gonna through your connections. You're going to reach out to all of them uh -huh. and send them this teaser and uh, ask them to review. And if they are interested, they will come back and then the process will continue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's like the first stage. And as an associate and analyst, so this is like where most of the work is carried by, by you too. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, you will you will be creating PowerPoint slides, again, maximum 10 to 20 pages. Uh -huh. It's going to be very high level, but it's going to have a few charts. It's going uh -huh. to have a few financial points. It's going to have a few descriptive uh, points as well, like mm -hmm. what, what the business does, what are the areas that business uh, is developing in, etc. But nothing like from business plan, nothing like major uh -huh. to give uh -huh. like a... Operation, on the operations of the company. Or yeah, it, you can put like number of employees, okay. headquarters, and like all the all the like stuff that people more, more yeah, or less already yeah, know yeah, yeah, if they're yeah. in the industry. But you won't go into like deep, uh, deep stuff mm -hmm. uh, yet. Mm -hmm. So when you do the soft sounding, mm -hmm. you would uh, basically you will receive the feedback from mm -hmm. the bidders. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, simultaneously, you will keep working on something which is called financial model uh -huh. and the IM. Uh -huh. So IM is information memorandum. Mm -hmm. So financial model is basically an Excel file that kind of it basically it is the model of the company that summarizes their operations and the business plan. Mm -hmm. So usually if you're on a sell side, you you would put like management case or or usually we have just one and you will present the view of management mm -hmm. so it would be more of a data book than, than the actual model where you would like basically you will you will create you will create as i said in excel you will create basically the, the all the all the stuff like revenue uh -huh. uh, all the cost you will project everything and you will go down to usually free cash flow uh -huh. uh, and basically you will you will allow the other party to see like what what is the management view of the business going forward uh, what, what what has been there historically what has been happening and, and then what's was projected it, it was projected that's called the management view that, that's called the management view okay. obviously it will be scrutinized by all the bidders they will mm -hmm. put in their own view their own growth rates mm -hmm. their own uh, assumptions mm -hmm. but you you always go with the management view and mm -hmm. that's basically what management thinks of the business uh, as of today right the, uh, the, uh, the when you say management is your client the one selling exactly. the management of the company so ceo uh -huh. cfo and all the people that are preparing the, mm -hmm. the, the, the the model right 
and the business plan. So you work with them to build that model. Exactly. So you work with with all the all the key people that uh -huh. are working because they would usually internally have their own model, mm -hmm. and usually those models, depending on the company, obviously, mm -hmm. but they are not in like a shareable format yet. Uh -huh. So you need to like go and do a lot of like uh, down, formatting and like assumptions, break it down, make it more user friendly, mm -hmm. and th there's a lot of work that goes into the model. Mm -hmm. uh, but they will you, effectively they will feed you with the data, so mm -hmm. they will give you mm -hmm. their assumptions and everything. But you need to make that look uh, you know kind of financially. Uh, financially yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly, exactly. So that's that's the financial model part. Nice. And once you're done with that, then you will work on the IM. Mm -hmm. IM is uh, like probably the it is the heavy lifting of the process. Okay. So it requires the most of the work. Mm -hmm. So it is a document of hundred plus pages wow, okay. that kind of summarizes everything. So you start with like as as in the teaser, you start with like a small high overview, level. high level overview, etc. But then you go very deep into like operational stuff. Mm -hmm. So what the company does, what are the sub segments, what each sub segment does, what are all the products, what, wow. where are they where are they placing them, where they sell uh, globally, all the splits that prices, you can exactly everything. everything, everything, even contracts sometimes. What type of contracts they have? They, you wouldn't you wouldn't usually disclose contracts at this stage because yeah. it's very early. But you 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 show the types of contracts that they they use. When you say contracts, as in contracts they have with other suppliers, with, with supply exactly, exactly ah, yeah, everything. Wow. So basically, you will go very very deep in operations. Nice. Then you would touch. So there, that's one section. Then mm -hmm. the second section would be uh, market overview. Mm -hmm. So you would usually hire. They will usually hire hire external advisor, which mm -hmm. is not investment bank, mm -hmm. which is going to be so called commercial advisor, mm -hmm. and they will do the assessment of the market. So market that they are covering. So let's say if they are. In my case, if they are doing offshore uh, offshore wind farms or offshore oil platforms, they will cover cover specific markets, and you know they will create their own report, which is going to be hundred two hundred pages about the market itself. Wow. But then you need to summarize that report and put it in the IM format and like flesh out the key key kind Numbers of points. Or exactly, what is the growth rate? Exactly, exactly, exactly. What would be the market share assumed by the business plan of, mm -hmm. of the management? And, you know stuff like this, and then just explaining what the end markets are covered by by yeah. this company. So that's like market section. Then you go into financial section, which is which is <laughs> gonna be very <laughs> yeah. very heavy. So you're gonna go very deep into the numbers, and now you're not gonna not only gonna show the historical numbers, but uh -huh. also you're gonna show projections, and you know so the people are gonna be able to to kind of assess the company based on this. And for example, you will you will do all kind of splits like for example if you do capex you won't, you won't just show capex figures you will show like maintenance versus growth like what is included in the maintenance what is included in the growth and all of this info is going to be supported by another report for, by another third party which is going to be the big four like the, the uh, ey okay. Delo yeah, uh -huh. deloitte it would usually build the financial dd report mm -hmm. uh, and tax dd report and basically mm -hmm. they would issue it together with the im but basically you will use their help also as well as help from the management and mm -hmm. your own model to kind of build this financial section in the IM. Mm -hmm. So the three of you work together. Like it's you talk you, to people and you Deloitte, work exactly. Whatever, you work with you EY, also, uh -huh. Deloitte, whatever, and then you work with the client. You, you all and you Second as an investment client. banker, yeah, yeah, you need yeah. to be on top, both uh, financial DD guys mm -hmm. as well as commercial, as I mentioned. And then there will be legal legal people that, that come in later wow. on in the process. So, so you are the one actually leading the process <laughs> yeah. and managing everyone. And sometimes that can be very time consuming. Yeah, and it can be very as well, uh, especially when you're an associate. So when you're an analyst, you are usually a person who gets work from the associate and uh -huh. from the team and doesn't really need to be on top of everything mm, and mm, doesn't really mm. make contact with it. Maybe it, they will if it's something they like super specific. You, yeah. Or... But you as an associate, you are actually the one like overlooking everything mm. and then getting your instructions from a vice president and above, but then passing them on to analysts and then checking yeah. everything that analyst does. So it's like quite a lot of work is required from an associate on yeah. uh, uh, when I am is, is being built. Yeah. So that's kind of financial section. Then usually you would have like a business plan, mm -hmm. which kind of describes all of the forecasts and why are they why they use those assumptions? Uh -huh. what, what do they consider like? And it's more it's not only like quantitative stuff; it's also qualitative stuff. Uh -huh. So it's like uh, also the descriptive, like what what do we think? Where are we gonna expand? Uh, mm -hmm. What are our what is our thinking about the company? Where do we see ourselves in the next five or six years, whatever? So that's and that's gonna be like kind of usually the final section. Sometimes you have a few more add-ons, uh -huh. but that's like basically covering everything. So you cover yeah. the operational side, you cover legal, uh, you cover actually legal, financial, uh, business plan, everything is right. covered by the IM. 
And that is one document that all the bidders who are interested in the process, mm -hmm. who said after teaser, yeah, we want to participate, that's the one that they're going to base their analysis on. And mm -hmm. that's the one that they're going to read and like base the initial valuation on. Because I didn't mention, this is called phase one of the process. Wow, okay. Yeah, so this is phase one because uh, the bidders, they, they, they are given a certain date, mm -hmm. which is set by investment bankers and the company. And we usually tell them, look, you have whatever, four or five weeks, mm -hmm. you have, we give them financial model, IM, all the DD reports. Uh -huh. And we tell them, look, if you have four to five weeks, come up with a non-binding offer. Uh -huh. uh, what does that mean? So they will do all the analysis that they need. Find the numbers, yeah, yeah, financial, everything. They will use their own assumptions and they will come up to the value that they believe that this business is worth today. Mm -hmm. And they will say, okay, we, the, the whatever name we are submitting this this number and that's their non-binding offer uh -huh. non-binding is because they don't need to pay in the end this amount of money if they don't decide in phase two which we're going to uh -huh. get to get uh -huh. to uh -huh. shortly but basically uh, once you do the whole uh, the whole analysis and everything uh -huh. you receive all those uh, inbounds from them whoever like usually some people that like once they receive the IM and model, once they understand the business more, they will drop from the process. Uh -huh. So not everyone who They're says not, teaser, they just yeah. said doesn't match their Maybe they didn't understand this, the, the teaser well. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. There are various reasons why they yeah. wouldn't pursue it. But then like uh, people that are interested, they're going to spend mm -hmm. a lot of time even like, so that's the buy side. They will sometimes hire the, the financial advisors. They will hire mm -hmm. their own uh, big four uh, to, to do the reviews, wow, okay. etc. So they will have like their own legal team as well. They will uh -huh. all do the work and come up to, uh, with the number in the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then once you receive all the all the feedback kind of, or, feedback or uh -huh. whatever, so all the kind of bids, uh -huh. we call them bids, uh -huh. first, first round bids, usually sometimes it can be only one or two. Uh -huh. So you, you just, the, the more the better because you okay, you make the process more competitive. And probability of the deal being and closed is Exactly, is higher. higher. But then usually you would like pick the ones that bid the highest. Mm -hmm. Or if there is like a specific strategic uh, sense to pull someone else through, then you mm -hmm. you might do the exception, but usually it's the people who bid the bid the highest okay. would go into phase two. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Yeah. So so that's the that's phase one. Nice. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. then the, <laughs> the heavy lifting of the work is done by uh, by covering like I am financial model, but there is still a lot of work to be done uh -huh. in, in other phases. So usually phase two or second round of the of the process yeah. is called the DD round. Uh -huh where people that, that are pushed through, we open up something which is called Q&A. Uh -huh. There is like an online platform, uh, the VDR platform, where we publish all the stuff that the company gives us, like all the all their legal, all their contracts, all, all their financial stuff. So all the documents mm -hmm. are being published here and we give access to the bidders mm -hmm. to this platform. And there on this platform, they can ask questions. So they want to clarify like, uh, what is the backup for this number? Like, why is this, this, why like, why, you know. Assumptions like that, for example. We don't like this, so explain, give us a bit more background. Like, why this contract, why are you in dispute with this uh, com with yeah. this other company or what's happening here? So they, they can ask whatever they yeah. want. So they do their own DD. Uh, obviously, they will have their own advisors like scrubbing mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. through all the reports and everything. Uh, and basically in this phase, you kind of prepare for a second round, which is like a binding offer. Uh -huh. So after they do all the DD, they need to put in the binding offer. Uh -huh. So binding offer is the offer that you put in that you, you bind to. So if you put in, you can't exactly. change it or say, oh, I'm not interested anymore. You can say, well, I'm not interested, uh, but once you sign the SPA, uh -huh. which is sales purchase agreement, uh -huh. that's that's the end. So basically you, you kind of agree to it. Uh -huh. Obviously, if it doesn't go, go through the through the legal authorities check and everything mm -hmm. later on, that's not, not your fault, but you as a bidder, once you sign the SPA, that's kind of agreed and done. Nice. But I'll, I'll come to SPA, uh, there's still a few more steps nice, to, get, yeah. to get there. So basically, uh, in, in this phase two, what will usually happen is the management presentation. Mm -hmm. So management presentation is like for the people who, who, who've been pushed through the second phase, the mm -hmm. bidders, you would allow them to meet the management in person mm -hmm. and have a management will uh, present their company in front of them for uh -huh. like five or six hours. Oh, okay. It's going to be like, a, the, so the whole I am, we would usually as an analyst or associate, you would summarize in a bit smaller document because I am is like 100 and plus yeah, pages. Yeah, yeah. You want to make it like a bit, a bit more present, uh, mm -hmm. representable and, and easier to present yeah. to people. So you create something which is called management presentation mm -hmm. and then you use that document together with management to, to kind of present to, to, to the bidders. To the bidders. And you would like bring them to your office, uh, whatever, go for lunch, etc. And you will have like a really long, like usually it's like five to six hours, like whole management day, presentation. Probably, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's half of day basically thing where, you, where they try to like give them a flavor of what the company, mm -hmm. company is, what the com company does. And likewise, they can ask a lot of questions that which they were unsure of. Uh -huh. So that's kind of very helpful. And then a lot of people like, once they do the MP, which is called management management presentation, uh -huh. basically they, 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 they either are, get more interested or oh, they okay. drop out of the process, yeah. 
and I didn't say this, but there are usually two two types of bidders, mm-hmm. two types of, of uh, buy set people that you can meet. So it's basically strategics and financials. Uh-huh. So strategics are the co- other companies from the industry mm-hmm. that are doing the same, something similar, and there is like more strategic sense for them to acquire this company, okay. so they bring on more expertise to expand in this mm-hmm. area, etc. Mm-hmm. And there are financials, which are like private equity funds, mm-hmm. which are which have like a pure financial interest, and they want to buy this company. The share of this, or or they actually want no, to no, no, buy... they, they want to buy the whole company, but the only thing that they want to do is they want to get their return to the investors. Uh-huh. And they, they they're going to be there for five or six years. Mm-hmm. They're going to lever up pay the debt as much as they can mm-hmm. and exit in five years. They don't have any strategic view there. Yeah. They just want to make the money on this investment and that, that's it. Mm-hmm. Usually, like logically, what happens is the strategic people, they, mm-hmm. they tend to pay more for, for the companies, uh-huh. not only because of like strategy, but it's also because of the synergies. Okay. Synergy is something very important where, for example, if you are doing something something similar, or for example, if you buy another company and kind of add it onto yours, yeah. you don't need to have like two headquarters. You can yeah, like... Yeah, uh, yes. s- Obviously, merge everything. Basically. Yeah, you can merge everything, remove their headquarters, remove yeah. some of the operations, cut a lot of costs. Yeah. And uh, therefore, they are willing to pay a bit more than financial because uh-huh. financials, they usually just have like pure financial. They, they're going to try to bid as low as they yeah. can to, to boost up their returns. Oh, so so, so yeah. that's, uh, that's how it works. So that's basically phase two. Mm-hmm. Once you reach the end of the phase two, you receive the binding offers. Mm-hmm. And basically, uh, once you receive the, so somewhere usually in the phase two, what would happen is you would negotiate the EV to equity bridge. Okay. So what does that mean is uh, basically the bidders, they will pay the enterprise value uh-huh. of the company, uh-huh. but there are a lot of things that are going to be deducted in this so-called bridge uh-huh. and we'll, you will get to the final number that will go to the shareholders. Okay. So what does this mean? Like, for example, all the net debt items, all the kind of stuff that goes into this, this bucket will uh-huh. be deducted here. Uh-huh. And there is like a lot of stuff that you need to go through. Okay. And this is part of the negotiations. Uh-huh. So you, as a, as a sell side, you will present your view of the bridge. Uh-huh. But then the buyer will say, oh, wait a second, you, you don't have here the, the whatever, five billion dispute that, that uh-huh. is ongoing, okay, that which, is, which is going to cost risky. me. And I don't want to have any costs that were yeah. incurred prior to me acquiring uh-huh. the company. So uh-huh. everything, all the mess that you've done before needs to be accounted for in the mm-hmm. bridge. So all the adjustments, mm-hmm. we want to put them in. Yeah. There's always a lot of back, back and, and forth. forth. What is going to, because effectively, it, it, is the final, it determines the final price yeah. at the end of the day. Yeah. 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 So there is like a lot of between the company and, and the builder. There is they need to agree on this, mm-hmm. and once they are agreed on the equity bridge, they you are hundred percent agreed on the price, mm-hmm. and you you can proceed with the SPA. Uh-huh. Now I'm gonna say, so once you let's say you you put in the binding offer, mm-hmm. you agree on the equity bridge, you select a, a preferential bidder. Yeah, that's the one you go with. Uh-huh. Then. Everything needs to put kind of in a legal form and uh-huh. so-called uh, sales purchase agreement. Mm-hmm. So this is something that is put by by uh, legal advisors. It's mm-hmm. also like a very very lengthy document mm-hmm. where, where everything is is laid out, all the details of the mm-hmm. deal, everything, mm-hmm. uh, the price that they're gonna pay. More of a contract, a big more, one, but... more of a main contract, yeah. right? And what's gonna happen on what day? How how is this gonna be transferred? How is this company gonna be transferred wow. to them? Like everything is laid you out. You don't do that's a legal. No, entity. that's that's legal legal advisors. Uh-huh. So you will have like a legal team that's hired also by your client to yeah, do this yeah, stuff. Yeah. But obviously, you need to review and manage them as well. So you are still the one leading the process, even yeah. though this work stream is not exactly related to you. So they will they will do the whole uh, the whole uh, SPA course, yeah. once once the SPA is signed. You can say that the deal is kind of is done in a way that like uh, sometimes you need to go and uh, go through the authorities uh-huh. and and uh, get the check from them because there is uh, oh okay there is competition. Uh, it's called like competition. Co- they call it like competition authorities check, basically uh-huh. something like that. So it's basically uh, sometimes, for example, if you are the company that does a certain thing and you're acquiring like another player uh, that does something similar, maybe you are going to be... or... Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're going to maybe become too big. You're going to influence the market. You'll mm-hmm. be able to mm-hmm. manipulate mm-hmm. the market, etc. Mm-hmm. So you need to go through all these checks and it's very difficult if the company is like uh, operating across the globe. Yeah. So that each country can have their own. Check. Yeah, exactly. You need to kind of tick this box. Yeah. And once on, only once it is it's, it's been approved, then you can say the deal is closed. Okay. And then when the deal is closed, basically you as, a, as an investment banker, your work kind of stops. It's done. Yeah. It's uh-huh. done there. Uh, you collect your success fee. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There is usually like a closing dinner, which is very nice when you're junior. You go with the big, uh, big guys, right? With the CEO, CFOs, with your seniors. You have you got some super nice place. Sometimes I remember a few years ago they were like uh, they were bringing them to. It was a football match between like uh, Manchester City and Tottenham. It was nice. like the whole thing was organized. So it was uh, it's something like this nice to kind of yeah. appreciate, yeah, the the work and everything. 
and they just say thank you and and that's it basically while you as an investment banker your work is done there and you're nice. on to your next next thing wow there's there's a lot to <laughs> like there is a lot i think yeah. i think you explained it in a very structured like for me i've, I've never really knew the process at that level yeah. and just walking with you and listening step by step it really does make sense and i understand so cool, thanks cool. thanks for that yeah. i mean to be honest there are a lot of like small things that i didn't mention that are but along the way but those I are the major you, ones yeah. yeah you did a great job in summarizing it and covering thanks, all thanks. the topics mm-hmm.